Hi everyone, this is Carrie Cassidy from Project Camelot, and I'm about to go live with Miles Johnston. We're going to be talking about the sudden death of Max Spears, a uh, super soldier. Uh, and I understand some people don't like that term, but uh, it's, it's kind of like all we have to designate uh, people who have been working for, uh, you might say, the dark side and have been uh, maybe messed with, uh, augmented, you name it, uh, through mind control and other methods. And um, so I'm waiting here for Miles. Just wanted to let everyone know that we are going to be starting. I know we're starting late here. Um, and I think what I'll do is I'm just going to put, um, you know, a brief little uh, sort of picture on the, on the, the screen here while we wait for uh for miles to join us and uh, hopefully it won't take too long i he said he was going to get right on uh on the show with me so um just spoke to him on the phone uh obviously this is a a very uh sudden occurrence and um we want to talk about some of the uh, surrounding events and uh, certainly Miles has been dealing with uh, Max Spears most recently and in fact Max was due to speak at his upcoming conference the basis conference that's in August uh, where I also will be at least Skyping in from what what we know uh, so just wanted to say that um, it's it's a mystery to me what what is uh, really behind all of this and and why why suddenly uh, this would happen. We are really hoping for an autopsy to to reveal what is going on with um, what went on with Max Spears and uh, and it, it is interesting. I have put a link on my projectcamelotportal.com to my previous interview back in 2013 with uh, Michael Prince and Max Spears. And you can go to the front page and see it there. Um, I've also got a link to a recent interview that he did with someone in Europe. Um, and I'm afraid I don't have those details at the moment, but I did listen to the interview and it's quite good. So I do, um, encourage everyone to to uh, actually look at that interview uh it is it is very sad news about max and i'm um you know anyone in the sector would be very concerned over the dynamics of what's really going on uh, i can see that we've got people in the chat thank you for for coming by and uh and like I said, we're going to try to get Miles Johnston online here. Um, if you hold on one minute here, I'm not sure what's happening. Hello? Hello, Carrie. I tried that uh, hang up, but I'm the only one on it. Okay. Uh, yeah, we often have problems like this. Um, it, I'm, I'm actually going to see if uh, what I can do here to get you on this screen. So hold on one second. Um, I just had Monica Duval on the phone. She's furious and she says, we're all just seeking publicity. It was just an accident that they get it. An accident? Wow. That's... Uh, he was taking his normal medication. Normal medication? But yeah. but he died. <laughs> I know. That's not real normal. Uh, well... In, unless the, it normally medication makes you die. Um, well, that may be the case. I don't know what kind of things he was taking, certainly. But... Uh, if you, you know, well, I something to be explained and analyzed, but I, I just tried reporting this. I'll tell you on air. Okay, can you hold on one sec? Because you are on air right now with me. However, I'm trying. I'm going to try to get your face. Uh, do you have a camera? Can you go on? Yeah. Can we get your face on Skype? And then, yeah, uh, let me see if I can bring you on uh, visually, and see what we can do there. Okay, very good. And let me see if I can then. Um, this is kind of tricky, but maybe it'll work. There you go. So um, we we do have you on Skype now. This is kind of amazing. This is working. <laughs> and uh, so welcome, Miles Johnston. Uh, I have already introduced this uh, this sad news as as we have framed it. And I I don't know 
the parameters of the situation other than uh, it was on Saturday night that you called me. Uh, we had just broken and uh, the, uh, you know, the, the end of the conference that day. Uh, so Saturday night we were about to go to dinner and I got a call from you reporting this news as you understood it at the time. I do understand that there was some kind of uh, timing in which you actually wondered if he actually had died uh, because he, I, I think they had, they thought perhaps he could be resuscitated. Was that the well, idea? Well, the bottom line is, as long as there's hope, there's hope. Now, I want to make it absolutely clear, Kerry, that this has nothing to do with me or you. It's about trying to find the truth behind Max Spears' death. And let's focus on Max. Uh, Monica deval has been on them. Um, because that's where Max died, and she's gone through enough hell as it is. But the bottom line is that a person has died here and I don't think it's good enough that somebody who just took normal medication should end up vomiting, spewing black liquid, whatever it was, and then shortly after that, whatever length of time it was, died. Now, the point is that there's too many variables here. Um, so I think we've got to be very careful about what we say and about how we say it. So. Okay, uh, well, I, I don't mind, I mean, I don't mind going on the record saying that I think it's suspicious circumstances. I, I've gone on the record and I think it is suspicious and I've, I've asked for an official investigation and I've asked for people to wait until there is an autopsy and an official investigation, but his mother isn't even in Poland yet. She's still in England, wherever she is. Uh, Max was only taken to the morgue uh, early Sunday morning, that's yesterday. Okay. And, uh, can you talk about? Can you talk about? Uh, just give us a blow by blow. I know you've put out your own video, but yeah, for the purposes yeah. of everyone watching, some of whom are not going to know uh, the details. Okay. Well, what, we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the clock back about three or four months because then it puts an awful lot of players and names into context. Uh, Okay, the Polish, uh, there's a Polish uh, conference called uh, the New Earth Conference, I think, because it's in Polish, I think it's, it's called the New Earth Conference, and it's, a, it's been a, an extremely advanced, forward-thinking conference in Warsaw, put together by two extremely delightful, uh, forward-thinking, intelligent uh, women, one's called Madeline, the other's called uh, Nuta. And they have been big fans of bases. They've been coming over in the last couple of years interviewing various people, uh, for their show in, uh, I think, on NTV in Poland. And this has been very forward thinking. And they invited me to speak at their first conference uh, last year, and then again this year. And this included uh, uh, Max. And uh, Max uh, attended with Kieran Lee Perrin, who's a British. Uh, uh, one of the leading British targeted individuals, and he's organizing the target individual community here. He's got these big implants in his head and he's it's whatever. That's 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 Karen Lee Perrin. Okay. Um, this was the first time that Max was to speak on his own. And uh, when Max first spoke uh, at the Coronation Hall, which is a little a little village hall in the middle of Crop Circle country, he was very, very nervous. And uh, he's so nervous he had to spend the rest a, 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 you know, in the hotel. So when he's now only like a year later, 18 months later, now speaking at a major conference in Warsaw, oh, oh this is a big deal. So I admired him for coming up to the, you know, to, to measure to do this. And um, so the long short of it is about two months ago, um, we had that conference and he spoke and uh, he was very well received and he decided to stay on. There's a very fine lady called Monica Duval, who is a publisher, and uh, she naturally uh, felt that he was a good vehicle for publication of his works, because the Polish are really switched on. They are so far ahead of so many people in the States and in this country. They are absolutely tuned in and all of this all of this subject. I mean, to go into Warsaw and you have a, a packed audience full of really intelligent, articulate people who really want to hear what's going on, it's really quite refreshing. It's, 
it's much more difficult to get that level of an audience in this country or what I know in, in America. Uh, we, we've got the UFO wacko law and the conspiracy law. But to have such a tuned in, civilized lot of people, it was a tremendously refreshing and civilized thing. So Max stayed on and he stayed with Monica. Now, one of the other key players here is Stuart Sverdlow because uh, there's a picture published quite recently of Stuart with Max and Monica. And let, this is a happy thing. These people are very, very nice people. Everybody's a lovely time. And this is totally pleasant and just great. And to hear on Saturday evening that Max had died, you virtually finished as the conference, conference finished, was a hell of a bloody shot. Right. Now, now, in the meantime, there's another player on this. She's called Christine Joanna Hart, and she's got a show on Revolution Radio as Queen of Heart in the States. Okay? Now, there's a major connection here with the astral super soldiers, because Christine Joanna Hart is a British mainstream broadsheet journalist from London Street Street. And she's been a super soldier and she's been investigating. Um, she's got right up to the head of the real IRA. She's investigated key players in terror. And a lot of people are wondering how she ever got there. But the bottom line is that she shares a lot of the attributes to a lot of the sort of uh, super soldier people. She knows Aquino, this guy. Aquino, she's been battling with him in the astral. And this is all on her show. She's explained all this on her show. On Revolution Radio, which I've republished with their permission on basis fifties after like thirty parts or something. Okay, and and just to be clear here, because there are people listening that are not going to know who Michael Aquino is. Uh, yeah, he well, is a yeah, black. Every character needs explained. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's a black magician. Uh, he was based uh, in San Francisco, to my knowledge. I don't know if he's still there. Well, I've heard that he's essentially uh, a much worse, a, a, a far more, I better be careful what I say, um, a far more intensely dangerous character than in, than Britain's Jimmy Savile, who was essentially, it's been claimed by sources that this Jimmy Savile was basically the, the, uh, the elite's child catcher. Uh, but that, and he was sanctioned by the BBC for like 40 years, 50 years uh, on BBC television. Uh, the key thing is that this lit Christine Joanna Hart with a keynote, James Caspel, Max Spears, uh, Dan McBowen, which of course link brings in uh, Paddy Brassard and Karen McDonald, and other individuals who sort of go to war on the action for some reason or other. Now, Kieran Lee Perrin, he's got these implants. Uh, he was, it was explained to him bluntly about four months ago that he is a super soldier and his character, his being, fights in other dimensions for a British psychic warfare battling team of some kind. Now, in the last couple of weeks, Max has, uh, Max came here about a month or two ago after the Polish conference and he wanted to tell me something. He came here to my house here in Wiltshire and then his personality was switched. He came here to, to, to do another two or three hours of interviews and something happened which uh, made him very hostile towards me and uh, it was quite disturbing. So what then happened was rather than me doing the recording with him, a woman called um, Oya, I think, 1100, that's to say, uh, Kathy Tomlin, was at your conference yesterday at Passing Clouds, the old, the old lady near the entrance. And she did an interview in my house with Max, with a guy, with a lovely lady called, a woman called Real Eyes. Now, that was called Max Spirit Unplugged. Okay? Yes, so and I, I think I, I have uh, watched some of that as well. Yeah, well, I think that was the last time there was any, uh, and then I did a little, uh, which wasn't, it was very lightweight, and so the whole point was, okay, Max, you know, we'll, we'll do another one later. 
Um, so but let me just uh, let me just clarify. Let me just clarify here that uh, what what you had said to me uh, was that Max was uh, and did acknowledge in public that he was working on the astral, that he was a super soldier used on the astral, and yes. that he had several. He says even on the uh, interview I've linked to recently that he has several altars. So all of that is important information for anyone listening to you to understand what you're talking about. Yeah. Now the other problem, the other thing is that um, spinning back another about basically two years, there was a huge lot uh, for for people who want to plug into the James Caswell story. James Caswell left the United States. We won't go into why, but he did. Okay, but he was operating under the name of Michael Prince at the time. Yes. And he was divorced and thrown out of the Mayer family, having uh, married uh, Haley Mayer. At that time, Max and uh, James, or Michael Prince, were exchanging extremely aggressive views and comments against each other on various media. And uh, I, I had James Caswell do the first and only made public appearance in front of an audience where he mentioned, where Caswell mentioned that he was actually there to assassinate a lot of the uh, Rothschilds and things at, a, at, a, at an event in New York. But he also mentioned Aquino again. And there were some elements of presentation which caused enough problems where Lorian Fenton was involved with. Uh, and a lot of agency people started exchanging email and discussions about all this. Now, the whole point about that meetup was that Max Spears was meant to turn up on stage, but Max didn't turn up. This was not when Max Spears and Sarah Adams, his girlfriend, had now effectively moved to England. And subsequently after that, I made a number of recordings with Max uh, at his home in Broadstairs. Because Max's family is a uh, prominent uh, family in, in the British acting profession in the film world. And his grandfather uh, was, was, a, was a major sort of bit part player in British movies. He'd be one of those actors that would always be there talking to the other main star in a particular scene, given whatever it was. And he, he, I think he was in movies like The Village of the River Kwai, a major British movies in the 60s and 70s involving major mainstream uh, British actors for the British cinema. So there's a lot of connections there with some pretty high level people. Right. Uh, um, Max, now, let, let me say that uh, because people are listening to you and trying to follow the chronology of, of where you're going in your there is some skipping around here and it is necessary to really fill in the blanks so people understand the context yes. of why this might have happened now and and why it might need to be investigated further and not just taken uh like you know as some kind of natural death uh, for some someone so young so uh at this point could we cut to the chase and talk about a little more recent events that may have led to his death Okay, so let's back. Let's jump to Poland. So he's got to Poland. Uh, we have we've had the conference, and I fly back, uh, and uh, Kieran flies back. But Max stays. So basically, Max is uh, staying um, with uh, Monica Duval. Uh, very nice. Uh, they're uh, and they're getting on very well. And they've shot, from what I understand, three very nice interviews in Poland. Very nice atmosphere, and I think they were published yesterday. Uh, and Max basically was building up uh, to really tell them very important things. Now, because of Max's, Max was being severely criticised by some of the key players who are in the back room that you will never have people in the back room which are involved with what was going on with Max and James Caswell and people have got to understand that James Caswell and Max were sparring partners in the astral. One of the things that they were doing was to spar together in the astral and fight aggressively as a form of training for whatever they're meant to be designed for. Okay, Max, James Caswell, 
Dave Marrow and possibly Matt Todd and other few of these children were part of about 42 children that the British put together for some kind of astral ET war for now, basically. And the ones that we know, one James Caswell was in jail now and out of the picture, but crucially, and this may be relevant to what's going on, only a few days ago, James Caswell's um, uh, appeal against his very long sentence in jail for essentially blackmailing the mayors, that was a charge thrown in at the last minute, which gave him a maximum of years in jail for basically writing online that he wanted $2 million. And he was going to get that from his under previous agreements, but I don't want to go into that, it's too confusing. But what happened was about four or five days ago, uh, James Caswell's appeal was successful. So James isn't going to be away for another 10 years. Suddenly James is going to be coming out in 18 months. So we don't know if that's relevant at all, but it just has happened in the same week, roughly, that this has happened. So that is just a, just a factor. Right. Right. I don't know that's relevant. Okay. So in terms, sorry, uh, in terms of to get back to the Saturday night and and when you got word, can you can you go down that road a bit? Okay, Monica, Monica Duval and the other lady, uh, Madeline, sent me text messages which I received all at the same time because I don't need to switch my phone on right about quarter past six after the, we finished at Passing Clouds. I go through these text messages and I'm on my way, I have, I'm making my way back to um, back to devices which have brought all these books, which anyway, so I need to go back on the train, back 100, you know, 150 miles back to... Um, so uh, I get this text message, Max is dead. So I then call Madeline uh, in Poland to find out what the hell's happened and she's very distraught that they're in tears and very emotional. Max is dead and we're desperately trying to get hold of his next of kin, his mother, right? So uh, I then standing at a, at a tube station and I get a call, I talk to Monica and she is extremely distraught that they cannot revive Max. So they, she mentioned something like three doctors trying to revive him. He just, he's passed, he's found him uh, passed out, not breathing. She's called in the emergency services. They're desperately trying to revive him. Now, I'm not sure if this was officially declared dead at 1600 hours Warsaw time, which would be six o'clock British time, or whether it was six o'clock. PM Warsaw time, but if that was the case, it would be eight o'clock our time. People have got to understand that from London time to Warsaw, time, there's two hour difference. So what's what's six, what's four o'clock in the afternoon in Warsaw? I think is six o'clock in the afternoon for us. Am I getting that right? No, now? you're getting that backwards. Uh, so it's two hours later as you go yeah. east. So if you if if for you, when you got the call, it might have been six o'clock. If it was that late, I don't know. If you left my conference, I thought perhaps you left my well, conference. We all left at about six o'clock, quarter past half. All right, so you left at about six British time. Then it's actually yeah. more like eight p.m. in Warsaw. Right. Okay. So. Okay, well, whether how long he he'd be declared dead is relatively important here because it determines whether even conceivable that he could be revived. The bottom line is, if there's any kind of hope with somebody's death, you do your best, you do everything you can to try and revive somebody. So if somebody says there may be some hope, uh, well, let, let's wish there is hope. Now, I had to jump into a train that was basically for communication for the next hour. So at the start of that train journey, uh, Monica's, just before it started, uh, Monica's voice went from crisis to possible hope. Now, that is where the confusion arose that he was actually in a coma and hadn't died. And that's all. 
there's then this gap of about an hour which I'm in it and can't really communicate. You can get about a couple of minutes or 30 seconds on a phone with the with the mountains and the hills and things when you're using the mobile phone network on it. Right. And so, you know, your communication isn't that good. If you're lucky, you might get the right bit of line where you get a good signal for three or four minutes. But you're going under tunnels and all sorts of things. So basically, it was another hour and basically a half, roughly about another 90 minutes before I was able to get stable communication. I it was back home. And that's when Monica was once again extremely distraught and he, there was no question of it at all. James, uh, uh, Max was dead. But in the meantime, people had been firing things around that he was he rocked dead and it was in a coma and the whole thing goes completely out of hand and that's all below me, right? Max was dead, dead and wasn't coming back. There was a period of time when maybe there could have been some hope. But that like five minutes then I was in the train for the next hour and a half. So let's get that all in context. Okay, fine. Basically, Max died. Okay, now did the afternoon of Saturday afternoon. Okay, and the information you got was that uh, I correct me if I'm wrong. What you relayed to me is that uh, some kind of uh, fluid was coming out of his body. Uh, are you talking about okay, for, right. for days right. on end? Or are you talking this is a sudden uh, you know? breach of fluid or you know i don't you said it was black but uh it Monica could have been from the lower described. intestine after after uh i got back now we're talking now late late at night on the saturday night uh four or four or five hours later I, uh, monica is still in a hell of a state of distress because she's got max there and she, i she then explained to me that earlier but she didn't give me a time frame so i don't know whether this happened on friday whether it happened a few hours or minutes before he was declared dead or whatever i don't know that information so and we don't know the volume of liquid that came out of max but basically monica explained that a black fluid was coming out of max's nose and mouth and anus basically he was dumping black fluid now, I have no idea how much was involved. We don't know what the fluid was. We have no evidence. And that is what an autopsy has to analyze and an official investigation has to analyze. And anything else on top of that is pure speculation. Okay. All right. Now, and and so. Subsequent to that. Yes. Lost consciousness and revive. I understand. Uh, so, is there? Have you been able to talk to Monica uh, any I further? I literally off the phone. Uh, Monica literally called about twenty minutes ago before I literally started, and she has seen my my YouTube thing, and I knew she'd be unhappy with that. But the, the bottom line is, when somebody dies, and there's any, when somebody, a, a young man dies, they need to know what the cause of death is, and that has to be just determined by an autopsy or by official bodies. And when they do that, then they will see actual details. And uh, that may be quite some time because if, um, if whatever the authorities do with this procedure when you're abroad and you're in a foreign country, uh, especially, uh, well, it, it, you know, it, it mean, her, his mother has to go there. I thought his mother was en route on Sunday, but I got a message from her this morning that she's not going to be there until tomorrow. So, okay, but let me ask you this because uh, you said there were, it sounded like two or three doctors trying to revive him, if I understood. I, it was to, I was told that there were some like three doctors had made attempts to revive him. All right, him. so it doesn't somebody, before uh, removing his body from her apartment, because he had stayed there the whole time, uh, don't they have to give a, a report to even to her? saying uh writing down the cause of death in their opinion at least uh i'm sure they do but as, as i have not got that information okay and i don't think you i think you can establish a time of death but an autopsy has to determine a call now the point is uh monica has said that max was taking medication now i had other information and again, these are all interested parties that may want to muddy the waters. So we've got to be very careful here that he was taking medication, which was being given to him from a certain person. 
and he may have vastly exceeded that medication. And Monica said she didn't know whether uh, Max had exceeded that med medication. And if anybody exceeds the medication, you know, they're asking for trouble. And, you know, that, that's it. And, and if, if you take too many aspirin, ordinary aspirin, if you take a whole dose of that, it'll burn the stomach walls. And if you keep doing it, you know, you're going to you're going to have hemorrhaging. OK, uh, now at this time, when she, she talked to you, which is you're saying just recently and, and certainly, um, you know, we can offer her. Minutes ago. All right. Well, well, we could you know, I don't know if she wants is, is uh, maybe too distraught to go public herself. But she this doesn't is. Want to do that. She just is saying this. And she, she's not interested in feeding anybody else with public uh, information. She just um, she's angry because um, I mean I'm very sorry if she's angry. But when somebody dies, you need to get an autopsy and no official attempt right. to do that. Uh, yeah. Look, the, what we're doing here is a broadcast because we are part of a community, and uh, certainly Max would understand that, uh, at, that these people, uh, I just got, got done, you just got done with a, a fairly substantial conference that happened all weekend long. Uh, all of us are concerned. I interviewed Max Spears uh, back in 2013, as you may know, uh, yeah. and, uh, I think I might've been one of the first, I don't know. Uh, but at any rate, he was accompanied at that time by Michael Prince, who yeah, was well, previously. That was the very first time I met Max. And, uh, and that was at Lorian Fenton's, that. uh, super soldier conference. And that was thanks to Lorian Fenton for putting all that together and she needs to be given. Right. For that. But I, I do, you know, in, in the sort of um, because we have to trace the history here, you know, the history of humanity and and go is an ongoing story. And we are the ones to tell the history. And it's not to rely on so-called official and mainstream press to distort all of this at a later date. What I'm trying to do is grab hold of this thing uh at the early days just simply because yeah. you are one of the first people uh, the last people to have seen him because you you actually saw him very recently before he went over there and um yeah. and you were in contact with these people so it's it, it's natural that we talk to you um I, he, was, he was scheduled to speak at my about three and a half weeks time and i was insisting that what he goes on stage was that I already lost a speaker, Kara St. Louis, walked out of my conference because she felt that Max was just going to steal her material and uh, mouth off about her material and her stuff because he heard Max refer to the Bay on one of uh, Christine Joanna Hart shows, I believe. Now, she has just been about to talk about the whole thing about the Bay on her material stolen by Max. Uh, okay, but this this this, this, this is not this is not something that actually happened. This is just some fears that this person had. Yes, correct? it is. But the point is, I lost my main speaker for Sunday evening because of Max. So I insisted that Max come up with his own material, and he he said he hasn't even heard of Kairos and Louis. Right. So he doesn't know what the hell this is all about. Well, look, anyone who watches the the various interviews, and there are a lot of them with Max Spears that have happened over the years since I interviewed him along with Michael Prince, uh, we'll see there's a volume of material that Max has at his disposal to talk about. So, uh, you know, he would have been a great speaker and uh, he has, has made a lot of progress since the time when I first interviewed him. And yeah. I, I want to say this uh, for people because they're going to be curious about this. There's a number of sort of um, sideline issues that relate to this and could even have something to do with <clears throat> why he was killed. First of all, you've got a guy who uh, it was trained, was altered, was being used as a super soldier, self-acknowledged, as well as in my interview with them. Michael Prince said and told me that he was the handler of every super soldier that was at that conference at that time, back in, in the day. Now, Michael Prince is in jail. He also goes by the name of James Casbolt. I dealt for years with a James Casbolt who sent me some excellent, excellent written material that is available on my website to this day. 
uh, so that you can see what his alter, uh, James Casbolt, was doing. He was uh, a much more um, accommodating individual and uh, apparently someone who was trying to be a whistleblower back in that day. Then he made a transition and became Michael Prince. Now, Michael Prince did the interview with me along with Max Spears in a hotel room uh, during the conference. And um, I have to say that he predicted, he said accurately, that the powers that be the elite, the people that he worked for, in fact, who he said were uh, basically part of the Fourth Reich, uh, were going to plan uh, to have race wars in the United States in the, in the near future. That was in 2013. Now we fast forward to today when I've gotten many texts. I'm not in, a, in America right now, but I've gotten many texts about, and of course it's in the news, about various um, shootings and so on that went on in Texas, et cetera, that appear to be false flags to instigate uh, race, racial uh, wars of this type of thing. Now, I, I would hope people are not that dumb to fall for this stuff, but I'm afraid they well, are. Jerry, Jerry, that's exactly what they, they trialed in Northern Ireland. The whole Northern Ireland IRA thing was completely set up by the elite for division of so-called Protestants and Catholics to um, marginalize the civilization, wipe it out, control it. They brought various boot level movements in and up. They went up and down like a yo-yo. All the surveillance stuff and movement profiling that uh, are now in use with these much sophisticated facial recognition cameras, which are going up all across England and Scotland in particular. All right. Uh, well, absolutely. That was all absolutely. Exactly this what Europe went through now in the states was was tested in Northern Ireland. So. Yes, and, and, and some of the recent, uh, you know, France is being targeted right now, as we know, with some other, uh, you know, false flags. The recent one in Nice, which is clearly a false flag, in case anyone is in, in doubt, and the signs are there. And if we get a half a chance, I will try to get Ole Domagard on my show very soon. He He's an expert on spotting all of these meth methodologies. And it looks like a failed United States-backed coup in Turkey has just gone wrong. Well, there you go. So what we, you know, what we're really talking about here is these are not isolated incidents. If Max has been killed and uh, the evidence, as far as I'm concerned, and as an intuitive, I can tell you uh, right away, this is what I got. Uh, then this is part of a larger picture. And well, it I is not. I want to make it clear that I don't think Monica Duval has got, and I, she's a fine person. I don't think she has any active participation in this. Uh, I understand. Uh, but but what I'm saying is that he could be targeted from long distance. Uh, I, I know that I have been and I know it works if, if they want to do it. Now, the reason is I'm, I wanted to look at this is because I think we need to know uh, why now? Why, why target him now? They could have brought him back in and tried to reprogram him. Or had he gone so far off the reservation as a super soldier becoming a whistleblower that they decided they had to silence him. Did if he well, have I some mean, special I mean, knowledge? I mean, if he was going to come out with stuff, uh, the stuff he came out with on um, Christine Joanna Hart show, because the last time he was on, he was on with her show on the Thursday, and he pulled out in the second hour. So uh, that would have been prime time in the afternoon in the United States. Uh, Christine Hart show uh, is uh, goes out from seven p.m. from nine o'clock here. She's from in England. She was interviewing him for an hour, and then he pulled out, and then she basically just pulled out as well. She went in a hell of a roasting from Revolution Radio. So as late as Thursday, Max was, was on air. Okay, do you know why? Do you know why he pulled out? Did you ever hear? I, I don't know, because uh, next day it was, it was Friday, and then I, I, was, I was preparing for, for, for the lecture, but I got two text messages from Christine Joanna Hart questioning was he murdered? And then I says, no, look, leave us alone. This is a tragic time. Let the, let the, you know, the first theory said she said it again. Was she, was he murdered? Right. So, uh, well, Christine I mean, Trinidad Hart has worked for front, front line or front companies for MI6. And once an agent, always an agent. And right now she's a penniless broke, a single mother in, uh, in, in, in central London. Um, but uh, Christy Joanna Hart will play silly, but she is as sharp as they come. 
Okay. Uh, well, I mean, uh, look, I, I got this uh, as an intuitive. Uh, this, this obviously has to be investigated. Um, the trouble is, is that uh, it, we would need more information. And um, I suppose... Well, I is, uh, if, you know, besides children, yeah. the mother, can I ask you, you know, because you have been in touch with the mother, isn't that right? Yes. So the mother will be in a position to also take a stand as to whether more information will go out to people like us, uh, to yeah, the public. Well, as, of, as of about midday or maybe four or five hours ago, her message to me was that she is uncomfortable with what's happened and does want an autopsy. But to be perfectly honest, an autopsy in these cases should be normal. So I know, but we know. I know, I know, but we we know that uh, when when a, a person of this type is involved, uh, such as uh, you know a super soldier, a person who is in our sector, uh, nothing is acts a normal half the time and or more than half the time, and and they're always very suspicious things that go on so we need to keep an eye out this is just uh being cautious this is just being um vigilant to make sure that the truth is not hidden uh it's so important well i did try to report this to the police the local police and basically they couldn't give it down right so well they said go to your embassy and use interpol Okay. I don't know where you find a British embassy in 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 in, in England. <laughs> yeah, you have to be abroad to find an embassy. Right. Uh, well, I, I you know it is unfortunate that Monica is not more forthcoming. Uh, is there anyone around? Wasn't there another woman in the apartment, or, no, or the was only that? The person who was ultimately present. Madeline uh, explained to me he hadn't actually seen or been with Max for two months. Ah. Okay. So uh, I think. Uh, we have a situation where basically uh, it's been dumped on uh, Monica's lap that Max has died in her apartment and she's been distraught. The only thing is, why didn't she call the ambulance immediately? But I mean, that's it really. That's be the question. Whether to save Max or not, we don't know. But I mean, if Max was being poisoned or if he's been given prescription pills that he was over indulging in, uh, I mean, ultimately, it's an accident. He's, he's self-harm. It's a cut-and-dried case of, you know, he took too many pills. Okay, is, is there... Well, died. let me ask you this. Is, is there any evidence of what type of medication it was? If No I, idea. And anything else well, are you crazy. able to get in touch with the people that were giving him this? And that doesn't mean that's the only thing he's taking. I mean, just because you, you're aware well, of a certain thing, he uh, could could have been taking lots of different things for all you know. As far as Monica explained to me over several conversations was he was completely drug clean. He was off all the drugs. Sarah explained that when he called her from, uh, I think he was in Malta, uh, one of the Mediterranean islands, uh, Max was known to be, he wouldn't tell us where he was going, but he was flying to different places. He would say, I'm just coming back from the airport, or, or I'm just here this time zone, but he wouldn't actually say. So, I mean, he, whatever business he was doing, he was doing whatever business he was doing. But somehow being given something, uh, whatever it was, has caused some severe harm, and ultimately he killed him. It would have been. Uh, okay, well, uh, I mean, I again, this... Down. Unless the doctors thought the medication he was taking, uh, you know, this sounds like something he might have been taking over a long period of time that may have nothing to do with his death. Uh, I can say that what sound what it sounds like to me is that he was poisoned, um, but it, it may be more sophisticated even than that. Uh, it could even be radiation poisoning. I mean, there are many methods. I know that we had gone to see Kesh uh, about a year ago and we were in Venice and we got deathly ill uh, in 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 record time you might say and I'm sure that somebody actually sprayed something in our face uh, yeah. the question or gave us food poisoning that was so yeah, severe I had that, I had that happen to me at the UFO Congress somebody rushed into the bus as we go to the airport sat beside me and then suddenly changed seats again and uh, Within about five minutes or two or three minutes, I started to suffer an extreme reaction. So they poisoned this. It's not rocket science. Well, I Question mean, is who or why? 
Right. So, so what am I right in understanding that he was speaking at a conference at this time, uh, the day before, or was this a misunderstanding? No, no, no. He was, the only thing he was doing, as far as we're concerned, was his last appearance was on the, the Christy Joanna Hart show, and at seven, that's not at seven to nine p.m. our time. So, uh, uh, Warsaw time, it's uh, nine till eleven p.m. I think that's a right uh, and, and what uh, on what day was that? That was last Thursday. Okay, so that was Thursday. And then was he taken ill on the Friday? Was that your understanding? Uh, what actually happened between Friday and Saturday? In that timeline, the only person who can answer that is Monica. Okay. Uh, well, Chris, I mean, for some reason, he crashed off air and didn't do the second hour on, on the Thursday evening. All right. Uh, I wonder if the first hour is. Can you can you get it now? Is it still well, online? I'm sure if that's uploaded. It'll be on my, my uh, bases. One of my bases moderators called Tajinda. Yeah, High Elms conference on the Saturday. He'll probably upload that on Christine's uh, site, which I don't know what it is because I I, I long since I haven't uploaded any of her shows for quite some time now on basis 50 because I decided look, it's your own show you know you need to be putting it on your own channel okay so is there anything else we can add to this uh, that will help people because I, I do have people in the chat it's possible they want to ask some questions I do want to open up for for questions here yeah yeah the, the um, important thing is that until we get an autopsy uh, we simply don't know. I think we, the only thing we do know is that he's dead. He is dead, and his body was removed uh, from Monica's apartment early on Sunday morning to the hospital to the morgue, and that, and he awaits there to be um, to be to be removed to 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 the UK. I mean, maybe why um, his mother hasn't. You know, flown over there immediately, but there may be very real important reasons why mechanically you can't do that because you've got to wait for the relevant authorities and paperwork to get a coffin ready to ship back so she can fly back with and go through the relevant procedures. Uh, I mean, this is a very distressing time for everybody. Okay, uh, now someone I'm, in the I'm obviously guilty of. Uh, you know, online speculation, but I've tried to keep to the facts and I've given my opinion. And my opinion is that that there's enough doubt here that it really does feel as if somehow uh, Max uh, lost his life by design and not by accident. Okay, uh, I, I I see in the chat that Stuart Swordlow uh, was was somehow in contact with uh, with Max recently. Yeah, I mean, there was, that's no secret. There's a very nice photograph of Monica with Max and Stuart at dinner together. That's about three or four weeks ago. So I don't know what level of continued contact uh, Stuart has had. Uh, I understand from Sarah that uh, Stuart's uh, wife was giving him some medicated, uh, uh, some medication of some kind, uh, prescription drugs, I suppose is the, is the term. I don't know what they are. I don't know how much it was. I don't know how much Max actually took. So I mean, those if, if if they took if he took them at all. So I simply don't know. I cannot. Nobody should take that as as read. Right. Okay. Well, uh, perhaps we can get in touch with Stuart and see if yeah, anyone. I mean, if anyone listening to this, no, I mean, I, I do want to say if anyone listening to this is in touch with Stuart Swerdlow and he has any further information uh, or Sarah, I, I'm not sure who's what Sarah's role is. I'm sorry. I don't know her. Well, Sarah, Sarah basically uh, was distraught beyond tears. When I told her on Saturday night, she absolutely collapsed in tears. She was totally distraught. Okay, and uh, I'm taking uh, it that Sarah is Sarah a friend? Very angry. Sarah is a friend. Can you describe who Sarah is in relation to Max Spears? Who is she? Uh... Sarah, Sarah is uh, one of the so-called super soldiers who became friends with uh, 
a girlfriend's close, very close relationship with Max and appeared with Max on stage at a number of basis of conferences and, and small mini events and were effectively almost like a double act and they, Sarah would do her bit and then Max would do her, his and this was really the first time they were both getting broken into talking to the general public. Okay. And they began to, began to like that and they, they were both going to appear again at the base tour 2016. But um, I was not happy that that was going to be the case because I wanted them to come up with new material. I did. I felt that they basically gate crashed onto my conference because you know, I felt that, look, okay, just because you've appeared twice before does not guarantee you a slot the second time. And so I was uh, giving Max a lot of pressure to make sure he didn't come up. He wasn't going to just copy other people's material and just I wanted the real hard material, uh, original material. Okay. And, uh, that, and that was the case. Have you been in touch with Sarah then since uh, Max's death? Yes, I was. I told I was the person who broke the news to her, and she was on the phone with me. Uh, we were or on uh, WhatsApp only about three or four hours ago, and she was very angry about the Squirtle connection and the prescription drugs. All right, can can I ask you uh, if if Sarah is, would be willing to maybe come on the on the show and talk about any? Well, I, don't, uh, I can't speak for Sarah. It's entirely up to her. All right. Well, sure. if you if you'd and like I to get in touch. If you'd like to send her an invitation, because the idea here is there's going to be a lot of people in mourning, a lot of people with questions, uh, and I think you know when you have a public person, it, there's nothing wrong with uh, bringing this to the public because this person was a public figure. Um, now, Sarah herself is isn't she? If she is also a super soldier, she will have her own psychic intuition about what's going on. Isn't that right? Yes. Okay. I imagine so. Okay. Uh, so at this time, uh, I'm, I'm, I have looked in the I chat. I'm trying to contact on Facebook, that's all. All right. Uh, I have looked in the chat. Uh, it, it looks like uh, people, people do doubt that there were prescription drugs uh, being given to Max by Stuart Seward. They say, I think maybe they're very into organics and that sort of thing. So maybe uh, I think it was uh, I think it was his wife. I mean, I, I met his wife acting on behalf. But this is entirely between the Swerdlows and Max. I can't speculate on that. All right, but this information came to you via who? Sarah. So Sarah is the one who said that he was being given some kind of medication. Yes. I see. And it wasn't it wasn't a Monica. So Monica d didn't really know about the medication or what. Monica mentions something about him taking his normal pres prescription uh, and whether he overdosed or not, she doesn't know. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. So we're just trying to get the facts here very, very clear. Um, and uh, at this time, obviously, it's, it's completely unknown uh, in many, many ways why he died, uh, whether there was, as they say, foul play. Uh, it certainly is suspicious. He was a young man. Uh, he actually, as far as I can tell, he looked like he was in pretty good health um, in most interviews I've seen of him. So maybe that's a superficial aspect, but you know, um, that does factor in. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I hope you will keep in touch with us and give us updates, Miles. And, and you know, obviously you're going to go on your own well, channel. Sandra, who was also in close contact with Max, Sandra DeRoy, who was the girl you met at the yes at the con. Okay. Uh, she is saying, please let you ask the questions. Keep popping in. If Monica was not involved, then why was the medical unit called so late? That's the basic question, and that's a question that will have to be answered somehow. Okay. Okay. Uh, but we don't know the time scale here. Right. We don't know whether this all happened within like five minutes. He started coughing stuff up and just collapsed, and you know that was it, or whether this happened over a period of about an hour. Or we have no idea. We just don't know. Monica's statement to me just before we came on there: it was just an accident, and that's it. An accident. Yeah. Uh, how how would this be construed as an accident in any way? I'm just repeating what she said. 
Okay. All right. So there are a lot of questions. Uh, let's let's do some further investigation. Uh, I haven't given an, uh, just right here an open invitation to Stuart Swerdlow. I'm, I'm going to add Sandra. Can I do that? Yeah, I'd love to have Sandra. Okay, uh, Sandra B is online. Okay, Sandra. Hello, Sandra. Just right here, an open invitation to Stuart Stewart. Yeah, I'd love uh, that's a big loop around there. So, yeah, hi there, Sandra Deroy. Are you available? You need to turn down your speaker. Somebody's got a lot of hot around. Yeah, you, you need to turn, hi Sandra, you need to turn off your, uh, not stop listening to the show because you're now on it. <laughs> okay. Okay, very good. So Sandra, do you want to make a statement? You you knew, uh, you knew Max Spears uh, fairly well, I understand. Uh, well, it was, it was recent. Uh, I sort of like recently was in contact with him. Um, but, uh, the last time when I was in contact with him was on the 29th of June and up till then, uh, yeah, I, I was frequently in touch because, uh, he was going to, um, and be part of the movie that I'm working on now. So, and then, and then we just, uh, sort of got close and, and we were talking about a lot of things and, uh, and, and I, I just, you know, in a sense, yeah, I, I was uh, wondering about the medical thing and as well that, that, that he said that there were some people he was not in touch with, for example, uh, Sarah, uh, that he had uh, blocked her uh, for, for a long time, at least a month. So it's just, uh, you know, making sure that, that the information that you receive is correct. But I can't confirm anything after the 29th. And uh, he even sent me a picture of him and, and Swarlow that evening, and he said that he, he had um, that that the, I I'm trying to even find that conversation because it was typed. It was it, it's a little bit confusing for me. I need to go back to him, scan it closely, because because there were other conversations after that. But uh, yeah, he said that that he was receiving great information that night. That they were sitting all night and talking, and he was very excited about that. And uh, and then uh, prior, unfortunately, uh, he, he he before we stopped con uh, being in touch, uh, it, it just you know just silly things, and then things were blown out of proportion. But he he did say that he thought, saw a very strange dream of of a, a woman uh, with long dark hair. Uh, sitting in front of him, it was like sort of lucid dreaming, and, and he need to confirm where you're getting the info from because he wasn't in touch with everyone that, that you you keep naming so that's all sorry no that's great uh, you know we want to get as accurate information as possible uh, and and the people that knew, knew him or were close to him are certainly uh, you know uh, going to be in a position to make statements as to what they remember uh, you know you can appreciate uh, this sort of thing went on as well with certainly the death of Prince, the death of, uh, of Robin Williams, uh, you know, the chronology and the people that know, you know, and were in touch with the person in the last few months, uh, certainly before they die is are always, uh, important parties to being able to testify as to the state of mind, you know, as to, yes, the, he was very happy. I was gonna go in the, see him actually in Poland. He said that he has sobered up and cleaned up and I it sort of 
gave him advice how to how to clean up because I've cleaned up my, myself uh, through allergic uh, reactions. I told him, for example, not to drink vodka that he might be allergic to wheat because you know he might be going crazy after that to, to just stick to soft you know lighter drinks and he was like no 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 i'm even quitting smoking it's just unbelievable here you need to come and see it and and you know i'm not saying i'm perfect but you know i was obviously manipulated for some reason on the 29th of june so i stopped uh, communicating with him but up till then it was very intense yeah okay so. and uh, again uh this your name is sandra how do you say your last name sandra uh, Sandra uh, DeRoy. DeRoy, okay. Uh, and you were you were shooting a documentary with with Max, is that right? No, actually, I was uh, working on a personal project, and I wanted Max to play one role there, and he agreed to it. So he was going to come down here for the sixteenth, ironically. Ah. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, we sort of uh, there you go. So I uh, stopped that and so okay. I, uh, well, uh, I thought it would be better because I, I felt like I wasn't, you know, I did meet him recently. You know, it was just two, uh, you know, just a couple of months. But uh, you know, there you go. Right. Okay. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to add uh, that you might know about this situation? Are you in touch with any of the people close to him at this time or anything uh, other than Miles? Uh, no, no. Uh, the reason why I wanted to phone in that it really bothered me that, that he was saying that he was getting information from, you know, whatever, Sarah, but he... He was, I, I, you know, that's, I wanted to just give you a little warning or whatever, uh, sort of. Okay, so you're saying yeah. he had not been in touch recently, to your knowledge, with, with Sarah, is that correct? Yes, because that's one of the things that, you know, I, um, I, I was like, you know, <laughs> um, he, he kept saying that it's not good for his health, so he sort of eliminated some aspects and people from his life just to clean up his act, yeah, and just focus on other things. And uh, and uh, it's just, since you're investigating, I think that, yeah, you need to know uh, where, where the info's coming from. And um, I, I've never met Monica before. He, he didn't mention her. Uh, he said that, you know, he was out there and then, you know, whatever. And uh, that, that's it pretty much. Uh, he he was uh, very uh, enthusiastic. He has, he always, our conversations were uh, based on infinite, infinite information. He would never stop this man. Uh, he... Uh, he had so much information and uh, actually I'm scanning through the notes here as well because half of them are typed which is which is good and uh, I'm happy to share them with you okay uh, well I, I, I do urge you to keep them private for now and certainly if you want to try off the record as they say sh share them with me that that that's your your prerogative but um, you know I, I think at the moment maybe uh we have to hear from certainly the family uh the mother and see where uh things are at in, from her point of view um i think she would have the final say on what's going on in terms of what gets kind of shared with media and the public that's usually how it goes although certainly any of us who have direct you know interaction with him are have our right to share what we know and that's well, uh, Kerry, uh, just to make that Thank you very clear. much, guys. I'm going to jump off them. I think that. Thank um, you. Thank you very much, Sandra. Thank you, Maya. Uh, the, to make it clear, I asked uh, his mother this morning exactly what she wanted said and what she didn't want said. And uh, she hasn't got back to me on that yet. Okay. I understand. Uh, well, I mean, you know, you can't muzzle the truth and it, you know there will be an investigation uh i assume even beyond our uh, initial sort of questions here hopefully someone will well, there, explain how going. how something could be an accident uh you know how does this turn turn into an accident 
Well, that's the questions which are going to have to be answered by somebody, uh, asked by somebody uh, of a legal standing, which is, um, I don't think, we can't get that information. So anything that we say in that is just pure speculation. Right. Okay. Unless, Fair enough. All I can wish is to, to give a statement and uh, I would probably imagine she's not going to give any statements to anybody until um, uh, her lawyers or whatever else say what she can and can't say. I mean, I, I, I'm i just only speculating about what she can not speculate about. If you see what I mean? Absolutely. Well, uh, for the listeners, let me just say this, that there is plenty of information on the web, uh, many direct interviews with Max Spears that you can watch on YouTube. Just put his name into the search. Educate yourself. Uh, I would hope that the people in the chat wouldn't just reach uh, random conclusions based on nothing about this individual. Uh, and, and so we're doing our best to drill down and to get some some well, hard I, facts i just want to say uh, i was not at any time saying that sarah had been in contact with max in the last two months sarah and max separated i asked sarah last night if she had the phone number for his mother because when i interviewed sarah and max in broadstairs uh there was a local number to contact his, his mother on and i was hoping that by contacting Sarah, she would be able to give me that number because that's what I was asked to do last night. I was asked by Monica and uh, Madeline, could you please somehow find a contact number for Max's mother? And that is why I went online with a, with a broad shout out. If anybody knows where Max's mother is or whatever it is, could we get that phone number? And ultimately that contact was made. Monica was then finally late Saturday night able to phone uh, Max's mother, but she could only leave a message. And ultimately, from what I understand, uh, she did not actually find out about her son's death until Sunday morning. At which point, um, I was informed by Monica that she'd be on her way. But I don't know how long on her way is going to be. But as, as I said earlier, so that was the reason why Sarah was contacted. Obviously, Sarah then had to be told why um, I was contacting her. And at that point, Sarah was extremely distraught beyond. Uh, I mean, obviously, if you had a relationship for so long, as far as I know, that relationship effectively finished about two and a half months ago. Whatever communication there was between Max and Sarah is entirely up to them. I don't know when, whenever anything was maintained or, or that's up to between those two individuals. I can't comment on that. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Well, at this time, I don't see any direct questions coming up in the chat, so we can close this down. I want to thank you so much, Miles, for coming on the show and sharing what it is you do know and trying to clarify some of the sequence of events uh, as, as it was that you found out that what was happening here. Uh, and this is very recent, so getting the, you know, the hard facts is good right up front uh, before they get obfuscated by uh, press and other people that might have some um, some motivations to try to hide the truth. So do you have any parting remarks? Well, essentially, I think it's absolutely horrendous what's happened. Uh, it's placed probably very, it's placed, brought on a huge shock in the individuals. Uh, Monica had a wonderful future plan for Max. She really was thinking this was a wonderful time. It was a wonderful spiritual and wonderful new uh, chance for Max to branch out into a whole new life. And this is a terrible tragedy that Max, at the time when he's breaking out into a new wonderful life, that this should all just come completely to an end. It has left all the people in Poland that knew him absolutely shocked. It's left anybody else who knew him, like Sarah and others, totally shocked. Uh, I mean, I knew him here, and uh, he came back to me. He said, look, Miles, we've had our, our sparring problems or whatever, and I wanna, we want to concentrate on getting this message out to everybody, this, new, this information, and that has not been stopped. And that is a crime, and if there has been foul play involving Max's death, may the perpetrators be found and made due process to take take its course and okay sympathies above all to his mother and his loved ones and may they be given some peace and privacy at this time 
even though we've just violated that by doing this program. But the, you know, we've got to fly the flag for Max if he has been murdered. We've got to nail it and find out who and why. And may those who have done such a, a crime you know, face due process, if that is the case. Okay. Uh, it's just a sad accident, but I don't think so. And that's my opinion. And that's with all due respect to Monica, who's a very fine person. Okay, okay uh, just one footnote here, because we, we haven't gotten a definition. Uh, Monica is, his, her relationship with Max Spears was uh, as a... Uh, She's a publisher, and she was going to publish uh, a new project. She was, going, she was doing the same with me. Uh, we had had business negotiations and chats about getting bases translated into different languages and out there into, into, into Europe. Uh, she's not happy that I give away my entire work for nothing on YouTube but in English, so uh, that's just my choice. Uh, but um, the point was that we, we, me and Monica have had a business discussion since I first went, you know, I've, I've done two conferences in, in Warsaw and um, that's how I know Monica and uh, we're friends. I don't know if we're still friends now, but uh, as such, when Max stayed over in Warsaw after this conference, which was about two or three months ago, uh, he, I think, decided this is a new opportunity. And for what I understand, he was staying uh, in Monica's apartment. And as such, that is why he was there when he reached these difficulties and she had to um, pick up the pieces as to the consequences of what happened. Okay. Excellent information. Okay. Thank you so much, Miles. Uh, obviously, you've gone off video here, so just uh, oh, letting sorry, I'll, I'll people know goodbye. that that's, we, we put up a picture of Max here on the screen uh, for people to see who we're talking about, those of you who aren't familiar with uh, Max Spears. And well, I just uh, turned the back on. I want to say goodbye. All right. Uh, hold on one second. Let me see if we can get you back on the screen uh, here so hold on and thank you for sandra for calling in and um, and giving her input because obviously anybody who's been involved with max in the last weeks it, it all helps to um to actually uh, make some contact i have to say about sasha christie wanting to find out what's going on she's a, a local individual and researcher in england so that's interesting so i'll give her a little bit of a rundown anyways if uh, it's a hot afternoon here. <laughs> yes, finally, uh, some some warm weather. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you can still hear me, Miles. And uh, we'll we'll say good good afternoon to everyone. Uh, and let's investigate this further. Let's get to the bottom of it. Uh, we're all very sorry to hear about Max fears passing so thank you for listening and for watching this will go directly onto youtube in case you came in late and uh and you should be able to see it all there so thank you bye bye Hi everyone, this is Carrie Cassidy from Project Camelot and I'm about to go live with Miles Johnston. We're going to be talking about the sudden death of Max Spears, a uh, super soldier. Uh, and I understand some people don't like that term, but uh, it's, it's kind of like all we have to designate uh, people who have been working for, uh, you might say, the dark side and have been uh, maybe messed with, uh, augmented, you name it, uh, through mind control and other methods. And um, so I'm waiting here for Miles. Just wanted to let everyone know that we are going to be starting. I know we're starting late here. Um, and I think what I'll do is I'm just going to put, um, you know, a brief little uh, sort of picture on the, on the, the screen here while we wait for uh for miles to join us and uh, hopefully it won't take too long i he said he was going to get right on uh on the show with me so um just spoke to him on the phone uh obviously this is a 
a very uh, sudden occurrence and um, we want to talk about some of the uh, surrounding events and uh, certainly Miles has been dealing with uh, Max Spears most recently and in fact Max was due to speak at his upcoming conference the basis conference that's in August uh, where I also will be at least Skyping in from what what we know. Uh, so just wanted to say that um, it, it's it's a mystery to me what what is uh, really behind all of this and and why why suddenly uh, this would happen. We are really hoping for an autopsy to to reveal what is going on with um, what went on with Max Spears and uh, and it, it is interesting I have put a link on my project camelotportal.com to my previous interview back in 2013 with uh, Michael Prince and Max Spears and you can go to the front page and see it there um, I've also got a link to a recent interview that he did with someone in Europe um, and I'm afraid I don't have those details at the moment but I did listen to the interview and it's quite good so I do um, encourage everyone to to uh, actually look at that interview uh, it is it is very sad news about Max and I'm um, you know anyone in the sector would be very concerned over the dynamics of what's really going on uh, I can see that we've got people in the chat thank you for for coming by and uh, and like I said we're gonna try to get Miles Johnston online here um, if you hold on one minute here I'm not sure what's happening hello hello Carrie I tried that uh, hang up but I'm the only one on it okay uh yeah we often have problems like this um it i'm i'm actually gonna see if uh what i can do here to get you on this screen so hold on one second um, i just had mother to devour the phone she's furious and she says we're all just seeking publicity it was just an accident but they get it an accident wow that's uh taking normal medication normal medication but yeah but he died. <laughs> I know. That's not real normal. Uh, well, in, unless the, it normally medication makes you die. Um, well, that may be the case. I don't know what kind of things he was taking, certainly. But uh, if you, it, you know, well, I... It's something to be explained and analyzed, but I, I just tried reporting this. I'll tell you on air. Okay, can you hold on one sec? Because you are on air right now with me. However, I'm, I'm going to try to get your face. Uh, do you have a camera? Can you go on? Yeah. Can we get your face on Skype? And then yeah, uh, let me see if I can bring you on uh, visually and see what we can do there. Okay, very good. And let me see if I can then, um, this is kind of tricky, but maybe it'll work. There you go. So um, we, we do have you on Skype now. This is kind of amazing. This is working. <laughs> And uh, so welcome, Miles Johnston. Uh, I have already introduced this uh, this sad news as as we have framed it, and I, I don't know the parameters of the situation other than uh, it was on Saturday night that you called me. Uh, we had just broken and uh, the uh, you know the, the end of the conference that day. Uh, so Saturday night we were about to go to dinner and I got a call from you reporting this news as you understood it at the time i do understand that there was some kind of uh timing in which you actually wondered if he actually had died uh because he i, I think they had they thought perhaps he could be resuscitated was that the well, idea the bottom line is as long as there's hope there's hope now i want to make it absolutely clear carrie that this is nothing to do with me or you it's about trying to find the truth behind Max Spears' death. And let's focus on Max. Uh, Monica DeVal has been on the phone. Um, that's where Max died, and she's gone through enough hell as it is. But the bottom line is that a person has died here, and I don't think it's good enough that somebody who just took normal medication should end up vomiting, spewing black liquid, whatever it was, 
and then shortly after that, or whatever length of time it was, died. Now, the point is that there's too many variables here. Um, so I think we've got to be very careful about what we say and about how we say it. So. Okay, uh, well, I, I don't mind, I mean, I don't mind going on the record saying that I think it's suspicious circumstances. I, I've gone on the record and I think it is suspicious and I've, and I've asked for an official investigation and I've asked for people to wait until there is an autopsy and an official investigation, but his mother isn't even in Poland yet. She's still in England, wherever she is. Uh, Max was only taken to the morgue uh, early Sunday morning, that's yesterday. Okay. And, uh, can you talk about? Can you talk about? Uh, just give us a blow by blow. I know you've put out your own video, but yeah, for the purposes yeah. of everyone watching, some of whom are not going to know uh, the details. Okay. Well, what, we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the clock back about three or four months because then it puts an awful lot of the players and the names into context. Uh, Okay, the Polish, uh, there's a Polish uh, conference called uh, the New Earth Conference, I think, because it's in Polish, I think it's, it's called the New Earth Conference, and it's, a, it's been a, an extremely advanced, forward-thinking conference in Warsaw, put together by two extremely delightful, uh, forward-thinking, intelligent uh, women, one's called Madeline, the other's called uh, Nuta. And they have been big fans of bases. They've been coming over in the last couple of years interviewing various people, uh, for their show in, uh, I think, on NTV in Poland. And this has been very forward thinking. And they invited me to speak at their first conference uh, last year, and then again this year. And this included uh, uh, Max. And uh, Max uh, attended with Kieran Lee Perrin, who's a British. Uh, uh, one of the leading British targeted individuals, and he's organizing the target individual community here. He's got these big implants in his head and he's it's whatever. That's 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 Karen Lee Perrin. Okay. Um, this was the first time that Max was to speak on his own. And uh, when Max first spoke uh, at the Coronation Hall, which is a little a little village hall in the middle of Crop Circle country, he was very, very nervous. And uh, he's so nervous he had to spend the rest a, 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 you know, in the hotel. So when he's now only like a year later, 18 months later, now speaking at a major conference in Warsaw, oh, no, this is a big deal. So I admired him for coming up to the, you know, to, to measure to do this. And um, so the long short of it is about two months ago, um, we had that conference and he spoke and uh, he was very well received and he decided to stay on. There's a very fine lady called Monica Duval, who is a publisher, and uh, she naturally uh, felt that he was a good vehicle for publication of his works, because the Polish are really switched on. They are so far ahead of so many people in the States and in this country. They are absolutely tuned in and all of this all of this subject. I mean, to go into Warsaw and you have a, a packed audience full of really intelligent, articulate people who really want to hear what's going on, it's really quite refreshing. It's, it's much more difficult to get that level of an audience in this country or what I know in, in America. Uh, we, we've got the UFO wacko law and the conspiracy law. But to have such a tuned in, civilized lot of people, it was a tremendously refreshing and civilized thing. So Max stayed on. And he stayed with Monica. Now, one of the other key players here is Stuart Sverdlow, because uh, there's a picture published quite recently of Stuart with Max and Monica. And let, this is a happy thing. These people are very, very nice people. Everybody's a lovely time. And this is totally pleasant and just great. And to hear on Saturday evening that Max had died, you virtually finished as the conference, your conference finished it was a hell of a bloody shot. Right. Now, now, in the meantime, there's another player on this. She's called Christine Joanna Hart, and she's got a show on Revolution Radio as Queen of Heart in the States. Okay. Now, 
there's a major connection here with the astral super soldiers because Christine Joanna Hart is a British mainstream broadsheet journalist from London's Fleet Street. And she's been a super soldier and she's been investigating. Um, she's got right up to the head of the real IRA. She's investigated key players in terror. And a lot of people are wondering how she ever got there. But the bottom line is that she shares a lot of the